It was time to move on from Swarkston. Although a bit overcast, it was forecast to be sunny later in the day, so I wanted to make the most of it. Western Lock is situated just south of the Derbyshire village of Weston-on-Trent. Whilst I was navigating through the lock, a lady came over and asked if she could take some photos of Alice for a school project. That school project turned out to be a bit of a Derbyshire tradition, called well dressing. Wells and water sources are decorated with various designs, giving thanks for a reliable water supply. It's speculated it began back in the 4th century as a pagan custom. Wooden frames are constructed and covered with clay mixed with water and salt. A design is then sketched onto the clay and the picture is then filled in with natural materials like mosses, flower petals and seeds. This dressing made by the pupils, teachers and parents at Weston-on-Trent Primary School last year displayed five British birds. That was a bit awkward because I've just gone through Western Lock on the Trenton Mersey and my alternator is wired into my lithium batteries. Now I've got a battery management system that should turn something on or off depending on the, the rate of charge and I'm still figuring that last bit out so I needed to manually turn the charge off from the alternator to the batteries before the voltage got too high. I forgot to do it whilst I was at the lock because I was busy nattering to some people. Um, I went through the lock, some more people behind me, um, and I went off down the cut a little bit, nice and quiet, no one around. I put the boat into neutral um, and stopped and walked down my gunnels to go in the, the bow door and go and turn the, them off. At that point the boat sort of swung around in the lock and sort of got stuck. But to all intents and purposes, to the people back on the lock bridge, all they could see is a boat at a weird angle, stopped. Molly stood on her own on the stern and me nowhere to be seen. So there was a little bit of frantic people asking, oh gosh, you know, I could see them looking, is he okay, is he okay? Because that's the sort of thing you do when you're on the canals, you look out for each other. Um, and there were about five or six people there all sort of looking to see where on earth is he? And then of course my head pops up and I carry on walking back along the gunnels and everything's fine. Uh, and I just reversed out and carried on driving. But I should be aware of the worry that I put on to other people in, in that sort of circumstance. So that is my trigger to really install the, the, the switch between the alternator and the batteries to automatically cut off. bit of a good deed for the day. Um, just as I was going through Western Lock, which is the previous lock, halfway down another boat came around the corner and there's nothing worse than following another boat going in the same direction and they're double width locks. So there's a lot of water to move. So I thought at this lock I'm going to take it nice and easy and fill it up and the pair of us can go down from now on and the pair of us can go through all of the different locks right the way out onto the River Trent if that's as far as they're going. Come on then! <gasps> you were about two centimetres from going in then, weren't you? You were lucky, although it's nice and cool if you did go in. James Brindle developed the canal through Shardlow in 1770. 
As a result, the area became an important UK river port. As trade developed into the 1800s, the wharfs and surrounding warehouses each had designated functions, such as housing coal, timber, iron, cheese, corn and salt. Other businesses such as boat builders, rope walks, stables and offices populated the canal's basins, many still being used for the same purpose some 200 years later. So I'm now at Down Mouth Lock, the sun's out, and I haven't got one, I haven't got two, I've got three volunteers here, which are fab. And then it's out onto the River Trent, which is a little bit lower than the last time I was here. The water was right up over the bank, and it, it, it spread all over the fields here. But I'm pleased it's a lot lower, and it's a lot calmer today, and the sun's out. Just there is where the Derwent meets the River Trent. And just as I hit the water there, there was a huge swirl of water and it pushed Alice right over. Even though the river's really low today, it really does show its power when it needs to. This is Sawley Floodlock, and sometimes when rivers connect with canals, they have red tops to their locks. That indicates that you, when you leave the lock, you should put the paddles up so that water can always flow through. A couple of months ago I couldn't travel along this stretch because the, the River Saw and the River Trent were in flood. And this is the River Saw and this lock gives you a really good example of the sheer levels of how the water has risen. Because this lock must be a good two metres deep and by the look of the floor, by the look of the luscious green grass, the water levels overrode both gates and completely flooded this area. Continuing south on the River Saw, I passed the floodlocks at Kegworth that were thankfully open today and turned the corner towards Kegworth New Lock. Even though a narrowboat was in the lock and the gates had been closed, they kindly went across the lock to reopen them once they saw me. I made sure I thanked them. And because of the sheer power of this lock, it benefited both of us. We held back in the lock's chamber 
and with two boats side by side, it reduced the water bashing us about. Once I was up on the calm top section of the river saw, I found a nice mooring spot to settle down for a few days. If you've not already subscribed, please do. It doesn't cost you anything, and by clicking the bell icon, you'll be notified about future releases. Until next time, see you later.